This is Steve. Steve is a poet, a writer, and a Muslim. Simple as that. That's who I am. Welcome, Steve. <laughs> it's gonna be an awesome interview, I have a feeling. <laughs> 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 Good to have you, bro. Thank you. Uh, we went to we went to anthropology MA program over here in Tallinn University together. That's why we got to know each other. I haven't seen him for like forever, so he might as well be a stranger. We uh, met, like saw each other like last time was like two years ago maybe. I've shown your videos of you pronouncing uh, the Estonian tongue twisters. Entertaining. Yeah, I remember that. You are a writer, poet. That's your the most you identify with that the most, right? I think being a writer is for me currently at this moment. It's a thing I've been doing since I was fourteen. So, like past eighteen years has has been consciously like doing it. Poet and writer, and what else would you would you think you are that you yeah. identify with? I was, uh, I was just thinking about it because like when you contacted me you were like I want to do with the Estonian Muslim yeah. uh, so it's like this one of the labels what I'm wearing because that's my religion so it's kind of like I don't know like there are there are many things what many labels what I could wear like a father a youth worker Muslim man husband all sorts of different things, Estonian, uh, like, and the way I'm wearing those uh, signs or like labels is just my own behavior or my own actions or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But w did you find it offensive? Like, no, not at all. I mean, this, like this, is, this is like this is the thing what we are uh, remarked by. You know, like there is like certain certain classification what seem to be more interesting for people like like I don't I don't mind people showing interest in where I'm from or a certain part of my mm -hmm. identity yeah. but if that becomes the sole focus yeah, of yeah. Their, our interaction yeah. that become annoying yeah, right? yeah, yeah you know yeah how did you become Muslim um, my wife Christy she's a Muslim and uh, and we met and I started getting interested of Islam uh, because of the way she was, uh, she was practicing it, and I like uh, to to some like took me a year after we've been together uh, to to accept the fact that I'm Muslim as well or something like that. And when it, was that? It it was in year two thousand and four when I became Muslim. What in years? Uh, yeah, it's been now 14 years. Is she like Estonian as well? She's half Estonian, half Yemeni. So for her... She was born into the belief. In a way, yeah. She grew up in an uh, in Arabic country and her father was Muslim. So she, she grew into it in that sense. But it also mattered for her at some point in teenage years to to become Muslim or take that uh, take that role in life or like become a believer so it's uh, also not kind of like um, very uh, a person needs to make that decision of becoming being Muslim or being part of the faith I think but before Be you we, besides the fact that they're born into it there is a there is like a, I think um, like a line what you kind of cross in a way what when kind you, of line? it's kind of like the line when you uh, you say the, uh, the creed and things like that when you become a muslim or you you know that you have now, now you're official yeah kind of like official yeah, as well you did you to, go through that as well yeah i i, I said the creed and uh, what thing creed uh, shahada you you say a creed that uh, you, there is no god but god uh, and Prophet Muhammad is his uh, messenger. Do you say this to somebody? Uh, there is... <coughs> I said it to God. There is nobody else around. There are a lot of people who would say their shahada in a mosque to another Muslim 
Uh, I know a guy who who said it uh, over uh, MSN and things like that. You know, kind of like there needs to be a witness. Uh, but the moment when I decided to become a Muslim, there was no other Muslim around. Your uh, wife? Uh, my wife was actually away in England during that time for two weeks or something like that. You just can't wait for uh, her to come back. <laughs> I mean, this is me. I couldn't wait. Yeah, I was like, I was reading myself. You should be a Muslim right yeah, now. I was like, it's now. Okay. <laughs> now is the moment when I say it. And I called her later on and I told her that, you know, I decided to become a Muslim and she was... She was rather shocked at that moment. She was like, "Are you sure? Like, you, uh, like, uh, you, you need to be very sure about it. It's, n it's not like um, it's a commitment, you know. You, you, you make a contract between you and God, and uh, in a way, there is a. Um, so she you, if you if you uh, become opposite of uh, of the fate, you know, it's kind of like you're damned to hell in that sense. So you need to become it's a <laughs> it's a lifetime contract, you know. So she wouldn't be, <laughs> but say if she, you know, if you didn't decide to to become a Muslim mm. at all for the rest of yeah. your life, would she be okay with that? Uh, we never know. I mean. There are relationships where people are from different faiths, uh, where, when, where one participant is uh, Muslim or some other faith and like things like that. So I don't know how things have worked out, if, if we would have worked out if I wouldn't have become Muslim. If you have to imagine that, do you think it would work? Um, most probably, yes, to be quite honest. But uh, it's it also doesn't. It's one of those what if moments. Uh huh. What if I wouldn't have done that? What if that person wouldn't have come there? And these all these things would have come together, and and now we're in this moment. That's true. We wouldn't really have, that kind of yeah. Question, right? We wouldn't have that interview over here. If True. You, I don't know. I, I didn't decide at that one moment in year two thousand fifteen to switch over to anthropology, and you decided to come to Estonia. <laughs> like, like, yeah. If we <laughs> ask that what is the question, this is true. But you but get troubled with that, and that but not, not troubled, but it's like, yeah, there is variable multiverse. Right? Before you met your wife, yeah. well, you, you guys are still married, right? Yeah. Before you met your wife, did you know about Islam in general? Um, I knew some things about Islam. Uh, I wasn't interested of so much of Islam. There were um, some moments what made me interested about Islam. Uh, I remember this one TV show where there was a Muslim group. Uh, it was a prison TV show called Oz. And there was a Muslim group in the prison, and uh, they were they seemed a very interesting uh, group in that uh, prison atmosphere, like some kind of um, mentality, some kind of discipline, things like that, very uh, very organized and things like that. So it, it seemed very interesting. What, what's what's that about? What are they believing? And but that was like a fictional fictional group in that sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, which which is related to very much to American Islam and things happening in America with Islam, uh, but and I had also read uh, some study books about Islam before because I was reading a, a lot about religions when I was teenager. I found religions and cultures and, and, uh, and the whole you were just the whole human experience very interesting. But you weren't religious. I wasn't religious by by common defi definitions. I think I was, and I wasn't very much interested of it or or searching. Even I was kind of like hopping from one place to another, reading satanic Bible at one point, reading uh, some study books about uh, Buddhism uh, in another moment. I found some ideas interesting, some uh, some stories more relevant, things like that. But it wasn't like an um, organized idea. 
what I am and what religion I belong to. My parents weren't religious in that sense as well. So they weren't? No. So kind of like Islam is like the first religion you actually commit to and then say, hey, I'm a part of this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I, I'm just assuming, yeah. you can disagree, but I'm assuming your wife played like a, a very major role in your yeah. Yeah. You know, conversion we, into religion. Without, uh, without a doubt in that sense, without, without her, I wouldn't be a Muslim, most probably. Yes. And, and th that is something <clears throat> what I'm not embarrassed of saying even because this is uh, this is a very common thing that you become part of some kind of a religion because of another person you uh, you come into direct relationship with that uh, religion was she advocating it like hey steve try this thing out it's not really Islam, you know not not really okay I, I, we had very um that was a I think that that is a thing what keeps us together as well that we are very much independent persons uh, and in the same time we do not try to push our own individuality to another person we, we respect our boundaries and we respect our each other as a human beings with, with our own ideas I just can't imagine like what it would it feel like to be an Estonian Muslim? You know, it's not a very Muslim dominant country. Yeah, I mean, how many are there? Like born Estonian but then converted to Muslim? That number, I, I could tell random numbers about that. I think it's somewhere over over thirty people and under, under 100 people, okay. <laughs> maybe like that. In 2011, I think it was like that there is uh, 1,400 Muslims in Estonia or something like that. And 1,400? Yeah. Really? Yeah. But that includes all, all people who are living in Estonia uh, who are not also Estonian as well. They're like, I see. Yeah, like different nationalities from Soviet Union and also new uh, immigrants after the independence and so on. So that's very... Estonian Muslim community is very, um, very diverse. It seems like it's such a small community yeah. that you must know everybody. You kind of get to know most of the people if you if you go often to the mosque. It also depends on the person. If you if you go to the mosque or you go to the some kind of like a holiday festivities or something like that. And How many all, mosques are there? There's one mosque in Tallinn. Yeah, or in, in the entire in country in Estonia. There has been like I think prayer prayer rooms in Tartu. Uh, there was. Um, uh, congregation in Narva during the first independence time uh, so there has been like spots all around Estonia do you go to mosque often uh, not really often I've been like why why do you go there to begin with I'm, I'm, I have no you, idea about you the go religion. to the mosque to pray why don't you uh, just pray at home you can pray at home uh, you go there to communicate with other people with other Muslims to just hang out with them, talk with them. Uh, you go for the Friday prayer uh, when there is like a sermon and then there is a prayer. So this is also a time when you go to the mosque. Like there is during Ramadan, you go uh, for, for instance, some people go for the evening prayers because there is like during Ramadan, there are prayers what are longer during the evening. And uh, some people spend nights in mosque. Uh, it's like it's a good thing to kind of like be during the night time in mosque and you pray. can spend the night there yeah Doing it's what a, you pray you sleep you eat you talk maybe with some other Muslims do you have to bring your own food or there free food in the there's mosque? sometimes uh, food over there as well That's depending sweet. yeah you don't have to pay for that you know I mean like it depends if somebody cooked food over there if there was some kind of like uh, someone was celebrating something or brought food or somebody maybe sacrificed animal and prepared food for people and so on so sacrificed animal yeah I mean like uh, sacrificing you sacrifice anima animals yeah you have I mean I haven't cut my uh, the throat myself but I've hold down uh, a lamb 
uh, when my first son was born, there was kind of like a tradition of uh, sacrificing uh, sheep or some kind of other animal. And then I went with some guys to, they, they did uh, cutting of the throat and I was holding down the animal. What? what? What's the difference between, you know, like you personally sacrificing something to, you know, you buying something from Rumi? From the supermarket. Yeah, th that was the reason why I want to go, wanted to go with the guys to the place where they're uh, slaughtering the sheep and um, uh, to actually see it, how they're doing it. Because, I mean, meat has become a product. Uh, you go to the shop and there is no difference between yeah. meat, a uh, pack of meat like and a pack, of, pack, pack of rice in that exactly. sense. Like the, uh, you don't see that there was a um, living organism behind that product. And that, that was the reason why I wanted to go because it was like I'm, uh, I'm slaughtering animal for, for my son in that sense. And, and this is something I need to witness myself because this is... Uh, I mean, it's death, and we we eat meat. I mean, I need to be become if if I want to eat meat, I need to see from the beginning of the of the process. So it's not a religious thing. This is just your personal I mean, endeavor to understand your food better. Uh, kind kind of, but I mean, we we say prayer over there, and we sacrifice. The animal for for God. But just to be clear, to be a Muslim, you yeah. don't have to go through that. No, you don't have to go through right. that. Yeah. What do you have to go through as a Muslim? Well, what <coughs> what lifestyle you have to change into? I mean, there is what consists of of the faith or like practice and things like that. It very much depends on person. What what kind of things that person is doing wants to do. Uh, what he or she considers relevant and so on like there tends to be the five tenets of, of faith that you need to first of all say the creed do you need to Every say day? It? I mean you say it during the prayer in that sense when you're praying and that's not a very that, long creed that it's not long it's just ashadana la ilaha Allah, ashadana muhammad rasul Allah that's it do I have to say it in Arabic? Uh, it's uh, preferred to say in Arabic as well. The five tenets is that uh, you need to say the creed, you need to pray five day times a day, you need to fast during Ramadan, you need to ga give uh, charity uh, for the poor, and you need to perform a pilgrimage uh, to Mecca. So these are like the five, uh, five things what most Muslims recognize. Uh, Do you recognize all of them? I, I, I recognize all of them uh, very much and uh, and they are, but they have been very uh, different, they have carried a different meaning for me in different times and I've followed them differently as well, but somehow some things have become more rel relevant in time, like for instance, I didn't used to pray uh, in the beginning when I became Muslim. Uh, but I started praying like uh, six years ago uh, daily. Before that, I was praying maybe once in a day, once in a week, depending when when my when I wanted to pray. So praying is not like a, a, a necessary thing for all Muslim. It is. It is necessary. But you say you didn't pray. I didn't do it. Yeah. So you weren't Muslim. I mean, by there is there is uh, <laughs> that's the thing. But that's why I'm saying by definition. It also depends on the person how he or she defines being a Muslim by maybe just saying that they're Muslim, by not eating pork, by not drinking alcohol, uh, by not um, wearing something or by wearing something. Uh, by some people might grow their beards, some might not may not grow their beards. You know, it's it's very much. I cannot, I cannot say that if you don't do those things, then you are not Muslim, and if you don't do those things, you are you are bad Muslim, or if you do those things, you are bad Muslim, or you become not Muslim. It's 
it's not in my power to say those things. I'm just talking about general ideas. There is 1.6 billion people, uh, 1.5 billion people. Is there, the, is there an institution out there? There is no institution in that sense. There, there is, is no institution out there, there that defines, like, just the, lays out, like, lines. The institution and is uh, Quran, uh, the holy book. And it's just like, well, um, it almost feels like everybody can just identify as Muslim. I mean, like, this is a discussion among Muslims, for instance, if someone makes a terrorist attack, that this person was not a Muslim, that he did like some kind of a terrible thing. But then, then again, that person might say that uh, they, they are Muslim for doing it. So who defines it? Who defines the label you're, label you're wearing or something like that? Like when you start to realize yeah. you're you're a Muslim, yeah. what were the things that you were practicing that you made that made you feel like you're oh now I'm Muslim? Mm. Maybe certain behavior, uh, like for instance, uh, you shouldn't be cheating, lying, uh, kind of like maybe morality. That was something what what was for me interesting. Were you cheating and lying a lot before I mean, becoming a Muslim? <laughs> I, I think I was, I've been much more cheating and lying later on as well. Okay. On a daily basis we, <laughs> we do tend to do it. It wasn't that when I became Muslim I became pure or clean. This is an ongoing struggle. It's a, you wake up every morning and you need to start all over again in that sense. You can lose your holiness in a, in a moment, in, in that sense. I mean, yeah. One bad thought about another person and you become already, uh, in that sense... Morally tamed. Morally tamed, yeah. Have you felt like this 14 years of, you know, having this belief yeah. made you a, a different person? That's one of the f uh, foundations, I think, for human human life to be ever-changing, to always uh, kind of being fluid. You can't be very uh, concrete. But the religion itself is not fluid though. Uh, there is doctrines. Like there is doctrines, but it's also your interpretation of the doctrines. The fact that the form is the same doesn't mean that the content is the same. Me praying every day the same way doesn't mean that me inside during that performance was the same in that. Yeah, that's that's the question I yeah. have. Like, if the content is is like you said, ever changing, yeah. why do we need the container, the form, to kind of restrain it? Uh, <laughs> for me, it's because then I can break the form. Yeah. You. So you're thinking you, about reforming Muslim You can You can't break the rules without knowing the rules. True. <laughs> okay. And and it's not not so much of breaking the rules as well. It's not like a con constant, like I need to do that because I need to break rules. But because like somebody's like, ah, oh, I did like that. Why did I look do like that? Well, like, what's the significance of me doing like that? Do you want to convert people to Muslim? Not Muslim into Muslims. <laughs> like doing active missionary mission work. I don't know. Do you do you want people to 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 have this belief to share your belief? Uh, <laughs> Would it make you happy if we have yeah. like more Muslim in Estonia? I mean, I'll be honest. I have I have a lot of shit on myself, a lot of problems and stuff like that, and I'm I'm a little bit. I'm quite much egoistic and narcissistic person. That's cool. And uh, and so the thing is, I have so much my inner shit to deal out with, uh, to to make like to stay alive in that sense in my own head. So thinking about doing like mission and like bringing people to Islam is not like something what I would do intentionally. I mean, I don't know if if I read some poetry regarding my fate or if I write some things regarding my fate, if they're going to maybe influence some person or something like that. These, these kind of things might happen, but I mean, maybe, maybe my writings will 
even like push people away from it because my writings might be a little bit more different from the general idea or mainstream ideas mm -hmm. about Islam. Being a Muslim has it negatively affected your life in the past, you know, 14 years, you being a Muslim, living in this country specifically? That uh, it's been... Any inconvenience? Any... I mean, the only inconvenience has been pretty much uh, some kind of weird negative uh, internet comments on different websites or in on social media or something like that. I mean, I bet if you put this video on YouTube with uh, chatting with Estonian Muslim, uh -huh. you will have some negative uh, comments underneath that video. Okay. I, I, I'm like, I'm pretty sure there is going to be some kind of uh, weird stuff over there. Okay. Yeah. Are you, are you okay with that? I mean... I mean does, it I does it bother you? It used to bother me. It was very hurting in that sense to read comments from people who I don't know. There was this, and uh, like, there, there has been like several different things uh, happening on the internet and these, they have been giving me like bad feeling. Uh, and then I became kind of numb to it. And now I find most of them mm, quite hilarious even or at some points like amusing like there has been like comments like that um, blood of the victims of Paris is on the on your hands or something like that but this like, kind of like cyberbullying or you mm -hmm. know negativity yeah. online never really translated into like real life violence or anything like that I mean not for me in that sense at least thankfully as well because yeah. I, I mean yeah. from the look yeah. I wouldn't assume just you know walking down the street yeah, I mean, like, oh that's a Muslim yeah right yeah you don't dress yeah. Yeah. in a certain way so I mean you can really much ask from from a white Estonian male uh, if converting to Islam has made some conveniences to that person regarding a general some kind of behavior or something like that I think it's uh, it's much more connected to people who might look different on the street and uh, and toward them in that sense why don't you dress like a muslim <laughs> this uh, i don't know what what should a muslim look like i also don't know but i know people have all kinds of costume uh -huh. right mm -hmm. and you're not into that I mean, uh, <laughs> because you said it out like it's a costume. Yeah. It would be a costume over here in Estonia to wear it for me, I think. I need to relate to that for some, somehow to, to feel like it's, it's giving me something. Uh, like if I wear some kind of uh, Arabic clothing, then for me it doesn't look like I should be doing it. I mean, it's uh, it's just a clothing, and uh, it doesn't give me some kind of. Um, maybe, maybe if I would have lived in Arabic country for I don't know several years, and uh, it gives me some kind of warm feeling about it or something like that. Maybe maybe that, then I would be wearing it. Mm -hmm. But there there is no reason. Uh, for me to wear. I'm a Muslim and I want you to know. Would you want to make that statement? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've been looking weird my whole life. I had a mo <laughs> mohawk when I was in the second grade. I also got the earring when I was in the second grade. I just got it. Uh, I saw I was like, oh yeah, you have earring, awesome. Uh, and uh, wearing mohawks and uh, and some colored my hair black and sp wear them spiky and I had dreadlocks when I was like 18 and then I cut them off. I like walking around the way I look because I see these funny reactions on people's faces. I see when I walk into a uh, electric bus I see some people looking at my hair you know and when I look at them and I kind of like smirk or smile <laughs> and they turn their head off and <laughs> away and I'm like okay yeah I got you <laughs> but that's something like being weird 
being weird looking. <laughs> I mean, it's it's hilarious for me how much emphasis is put on on the way people look. For me, it doesn't show what kind of person I am actually inside. Let's talk about writing now. Yeah, let's talk. Uh, let's let's get let's talk this. Talk about one. art. I can show you my books. Is it a novel? Uh, it's a novel, but it's a very loose narrative uh, novel. There is like every uh, story is from a different perspective or different uh, main character. Human being is so many different things, so many different sides which you need to explore and religion is just one part of them I think I kind of and the, in the same time all of these parts are connected to each other as well like you could spend a lot of time on your body uh, on training and stuff like that but what is the what do you gain from that and what do other parts of your life gain from that and you know that they are gaining from it definitely like the like your your uh, physical state your mental state your spiritual state they're all kind of connected yeah because i think end of the day they're all just methods yeah yeah but w yeah it was in the arena of religion i guess why would you land it on like say islam why not christianity if they're just <laughs> a platform like uh, one of my favorite writers, uh, Michael Muhammad, and I, he just, uh, I just read from him one comparison that uh, religions are like art pieces that you go to a gallery and you can check all of them out and your, depending on your taste, you will choose your favorite ones. Mm -hmm. There is, there is not much rationality behind your taste or why you decide that this this is something what you like, like somebody might not like those strokes, but for for me they speak very much like this is interconnected movements over here, kind of branches moving out and stuff like that. So it speaks to me. Some art, Thank you. some I art doesn't speak to me. Actually, <laughs> to me, religion is something that consumes you. Mm. You know, it's not like I consume a religion, mm -hmm. but to me, I feel like you're not even consumed by the religion. You're mm -hmm. still very much intact. The The religion doesn't consume you at all, mm -hmm. but you are actually digesting this and kind of integrating this into your system, mm -hmm. which is weird because you can't, you can't outpower something mm -hmm. that has already been out there for so long mm -hmm. without being consumed by it, mm -hmm. you know? Comparing it to nationality, I mean, I think you can, what nationality would you take for yourself? I'm Chinese. Is being Chinese something what is consuming you or something what you are... Uh, yes, very much. Wh how? I don't know, it just there's so much, so much burden was uh, associated with being, you know, who I am. And uh, I feel like this is one of the one of the things that would consume me. Like mm -hmm. there's several identity that consumes me because mm -hmm. they're so heavy. Okay. You know, being Chinese mm -hmm. and even broader, being Asian. Mm -hmm. um, and beyond that, uh, being the only child in the family. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's just this, there's so many, I guess, heavy, heavy ideologies or heavy concepts or heavy traditions behind a few selective identities I have that, mm -hmm. is, a, that is on me. Mm -hmm. Like the example I just yeah. gave to you. And they consume me. So I'm just, that's why I'm like curious, like mm -hmm. how, how does being a Muslim does not, you know, like consume? Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe it does, but it just doesn't seem that way to I me. Mean, yeah, I mean, I do get what you're talking about. I do know people who are who have been consumed by religion, and I know wh what's what's it all about. But that's not me. 
and I, I don't know exactly what, what makes me me, what makes me not being consumed by it. And I have a feeling like many other people as well, they, even if they are being consumed, it is something what they allow to be done, I think, yeah. what, they're, what they want. And maybe I don't want to be consumed. Uh, to be honest, yeah. I also don't want to be, you know, consumed by my identity yeah. complex. Yeah. But I just don't know how. Okay. You know, okay, that, okay. That's why I'm like uh, curious about your experience. Yeah. Now, now we're getting somewhere. Like this is not the last question. <laughs> this is like already a very existential like problems we're yeah. facing over here. Like I started reading um, Nigel Rappert's uh, "I Am a Dynamite." where he is like giving this cosmopolitan individualistic kind of world view, views or like what is unconnected from from the social class and from nationality and all the like this all exterior uh, exterior reasons for a human being to be the way he or she is but uh, rather con- like concentrate on on the self power what people have of being themselves like the like kind of like realizing their like inner potential or something like that uh, and he's showing in many cases that people like no no matter where they were or what kind of situation they were in were they free or were they inside some kind of like a total institution or something like that Mm -hmm. uh, they they would still strive to do the thing what they wanted to do the last podcast that i did was uh, also very many questions about uh, about muslims about like like racism in Estonia, like discussions about these kind of things, uh, nationality and things like that. And I mean, they are there, but they're not as much interesting for me as some other things are. Like this world is pretty much a game and I like to play a fun game, mm-hmm. not play a horrible, <laughs> horrible yeah. game, game in that. <laughs> like, like there are things that I can find what are interesting and cool and amusing in so many different places in around the world and inside different cultures without me actually thinking about the whole shit what might also come together with it. I mean, it's, it's okay to contemplate and stuff but when you start struggling with it then it becomes like a nightmare in in a way in that sense you can't get out from it we had a similar conversation with a friend like a few months ago it was really nice summer day summer evening and we were standing outside and we started talking about freedoms and and need for people to have freedom or like uh, choices and things like that and then he told me like are you like it's interesting that you're saying these things but because your life seems to be <clears throat> all about removing freedom of choice kind of like in a way that uh, I became like I married w- when I was really young uh, I had children when I was quite young uh, been part of a, like a religion what has rules and so on and for me I don't see any contradiction over there because these have been my own choices this has been me actually um, using my freedom and I make decisions what I I didn't like and I changed those things I started working in a place what I didn't like and I quit that work executing that yeah executing yeah yeah executing that um, free will I guess yeah. 